some marriages experience challenges as a result of financial misunderstandings. This happens even when both husband and wife are gainfully employed or financially independent. You find instances where husband and wife resent themselves because each claims ignorance of what the other does with his or her money. The husband will assume, sometimes wrongly, that the wife spends all or most of her money on her friends or family members or even ex. On the other hand, the wife will assume, sometimes wrongly too, that her husband spends his money on his family members, friends, side chick or even ex. This becomes very pronounced if either or both partners were spending on their families and then cease after marriage. Or it continues by no longer the usual frequency but in reduced amounts. Either way, each family will claim that their son or daughter no longer cares for them after marriage. They will dump the reason and blame on the doorstep of the spouse. Whichever way you look at it, it is not a comfortable situation to find oneself. The wife's family will dislike the husband and the husband's family will dislike the wife. This is not what you want for yourself and your spouse. Can I be honest with you? Money is meant to be spent. Spending money on your family members or your in-laws is not a bad idea, especially as it is expected in some clients. Your in-laws are part of your new family. You should also not stop or neglect support for your family. Neither should you prevent your spouse from supporting his or her family. However, as a couple, financial transparency should be practiced. Your husband should not tell you how to spend your money. On the other hand, your wife should not also tell you how to spend your money. But once you are married, you now have a new family. Your money ceases to be your money, but our money. This goes for both husband and wife. One of the recommended ways to resolve financial challenges in marriage is for the husband and wife to open a joint account where each contributes a certain amount. The contribution could be weekly, monthly, quarterly, or as may be convenient depending on the source of income. Both of you should thereafter agree on how and what to spend the joint money on. The amount could be spent on bills, utilities, insurance, medical, education, family upkeep, recurring transactions, vacations, religious support, extended family honorarium, investments, and some retain for precautionary measures. One of the ISTV royals asked who should be signatory to the joint account and who should be getting the transaction alerts. Well, the account mandate can be either to sign for an amount below a certain threshold, in which case you don't need both of you to sign because there could be an emergency where the order is not readily available. The amount above a certain limit should be jointly signed. To ensure immediate notification of transactions in the account, the short message system, SMS, should be sent to one person's phone while the other gets the email alert. One can transact using mobile app, while the other can be registered for internet banking app transactions. The contribution to the joint account should leave each person with some free money for other out-of-pocket and discretionary expenses. Do not put your eyes on how your partner spends his or her leftover money. He or she is at liberty to spend it as deemed fit. Hopefully, you have received some value from this video. Until we come your way next time, note that marriage is not marriage until it is enjoyed and not endured. Let us know what you think in the comment section by sharing your thoughts. You may also wish to like and share this video with your spouse and other friends. God bless you.